Hey, welcome back to Chasing the Sun. I'm Eric. And I'm Janie. We continue our Mexico City travel series, and in this video, we'll share with you the attractions and things to do for those of you who haven't been here before. Welcome back to our Mexico travel series. In this video, we're going to share with you some of the most popular attractions and things to do, including the museums, historical buildings, local markets, and also some great Instagram-worthy photo spots that we found. But if you're wanting to hit all the attractions, then I recommend to give yourself at least five days in the city, which we didn't do ourselves. We definitely didn't have enough time to see much of the attractions. Really, we barely skimmed the surface. There are many great museums here if you have time. So we did get to go see the Anthropology Museum, which was inside the Chapultepec Park. Uh, it's a huge park, that's an attraction by itself, but the museum is very cool. Uh, what I liked most was this huge roof structure that was supported by this one single column in the middle. Uh, fountain water falling down, it's, it's a very cool site, you want to check it out. The museum itself houses a lot of the histories of all the ancient tribes of the Mexico area. So there's a lot to learn there if you're into that. Okay, so we are at the uh, Museum of Anthropology in Mexico. That structure there is pretty cool. It's one column that supports a huge roof suspended. Um, so as an architectural guy, I enjoyed that. But then also, of course, there's lots here. There's lots of pavilions that has a lot of history about Mexico and even the previous Mesoamerica days with all the different tribes. Um, this is uh, the most popular museum in all of Mexico, most visited. So if you're here, check it out. Other notable buildings that we went to check out was the cathedral in the Zocalo Square and is one of the largest and oldest cathedrals in Latin America. This cathedral took three centuries to build from 1573 to 1813. So the architecture is an amalgamation of the Baroque, Neoclassical and Neo-Renaissance styles. One fun fact is that the cathedral, like the rest of Mexico City, is slowly sinking into the lake that the city was built on. So if you haven't gone yet, don't wait too long to visit this place. The Palace of Fine Arts is probably the most iconic building in Mexico City. You'll see its beautiful dome roof featured in many tourist publications. It is home to some of the greatest fine art pieces in Mexico, the National Theatre, and also the National Museum of Architecture. We didn't have enough time to go in though. However, the exterior is equally impressive. The architecture is grand and is a mixture of Art Nouveau and neoclassic influences. The main feature is a very opulent dome roof covered in intricate lattice of iron and Mariotti crystals. So here's a tip I want to share with you if you want a good view of the mosaic roof of the Palace of Fine Arts. So we're at the Palace of Fine Arts, beautiful building there. And here's a tip for you. If you go across the street at the Sears Tower, you see right up there there's a patio. You can get up there, have a drink, and get a beautiful view of the roof of the Palace of Fine Arts. The secret tip though is make a reservation. It's all booked, so it's very hard to get a spot. All right, so this is the cafe that we're going into. Okay, if you're able to get up here, this is the view that you would get. So we managed to get up to the top of Sears Tower. There's a cafe here, as you can see. That's the Palace of Fine Arts. And if you get up here, you can enjoy the view, plus the patio and some cold drinks. The Palacio de Correos de Mexico, which is the postal palace of Mexico City in English, was built in the beginning of the 20th century. It was designed by Italian architect Adamo Borari, the same one who designed the Palace of Fine Arts right across the street. This building is interesting if you're into architectural history. There is no set style. Instead, it's an eclectic mix of many styles including Art Nouveau, Spanish Renaissance Revival, Baroque, Rococo, and Gothic styles. This building has been in continuous operations its opening day in 1907. And what I find interesting is that both the architecture and interior is very lavish and spectacular, but it's home to a post office, which is a very mundane thing. Most tourists who come here, of course, do not come here to see postal workers carry out their very routine duties. Instead, it's the dome ceiling of the leaded glass 
tiled marble floors and gold gilded staircase that draws a crowd. There's also a small museum display on the side which shows the history of mail service in Mexico which is worth a wonder. If you're into antiques and stamps then make sure you check out the display of the very first stamp Mexico ever issued. A museum that we didn't get a chance to go to, which I really want, and I'm gonna come back for it, is the Templo Mayor Museum. It's actually an old ancient room. This museum is actually the site of the main temple of the ancient Mexica people before Mexico City became a city. So it's very cool to check out. It's got it's got a grounds of ancient runes there. Uh, something I missed, I definitely want to check it out. If you're here and you like that kind of stuff, go and check that out. Okay, we also went to the Sumaya Museum, which is in the Polanco area. And I love this museum for the architecture, but also for the great photo spot. This is like, we took lots of photos here. Um, we didn't get a chance to go in because we spent like almost half the day there just walking around the grounds. So if you want a great photo spot, if you want to check out great architecture, spend the time outside. It is a free museum. It's an arts museum. You can go inside if you want. Uh, it's a museum dedicated to Carlos Slim's wife, Somaya Domit, so that's why it's named after her, Somaya Museum. Very cool, check that out. Okay, so this street that we're on is called Avenida Francisco Madero. And it's pretty cool, it's a uh, pedestrian only street. Uh, a lot of shops and stuff, cafes. Uh, it's What you could do is walk from the start of it, which is at the Zocalo Historic Center, and it takes you all the way to like the Palace of Fine Arts. So it's a nice connection between the two tour sites, anyways. So yeah, check it out when you're here. Finally, if you are into photography like us, we have some really great photo spots that we want to share with you. Yeah, this city is so diverse with culture and the architecture is great. There's old and new, so there's many spots that you can look out for yourself. But here are some major ones that you can easily find. I'll put a map in this video. First one is the House of Tile. It's got this beautiful mosaic tile right in the historic center. Uh, lots of angles, so don't just take one wall, walk around the building and there's many different uh, angles that you can take if you're into photography. And if you're at the House of Tao anyways, then you might as well walk around the rest of the Zacalo Historic Town Center and you'll find many photo opportunities. We found some great buildings with distressed antique doors and ornate ironwork that makes for a great backdrop. There is of course the very touristy CDMX sign which you should definitely get a shot of when you're at Chapultepec Lake. Mexico City has many great neighborhoods and Roma Norte is a great one for photos. It's full of quaint boutiques and shops, so just walk around and have your camera ready. These shots here is at a cafe right beside Mercado Roma. Another great neighborhood for photos is Polanco. What we love about Polanco is it has a nice mixture of new and old, and the converted estates that are now shops and restaurants bring a very elegant charm. And then there's of course the Sumaya Museum, which in itself is beautiful. And uh, there's lots of people around, so depending on what type of photography you like, you might want to find different angles to take it at, and that's what we did. But overall, Mexico City has so many great photo spots, so I'm sure you can't go wrong no matter where you go. There are many markets in Mexico City that you can check out from some really traditional ones to ones with a modern vibe like the Roma Mercado which is a gourmet food hall that serves things like artisanal cheese to really good food to great beverages. To find them you can just uh, google the, the markets it's called Mercado in Spanish. There's one that uh, specializes in meats all types of meats from insects to crocodile so anything you want. It's called Mercado de San Juan. It's actually located two buildings a block apart from each other. One has the fruits, veggies, and exotic meats that I talk about, and the other building is filled with stalls serving full meals, juices, and pastries. Another interesting market is La Laguna. It is the best known flea market and is known for antiques, trinkets, and clothing, if you're looking for that kind of stuff. If you're wanting to see one of the biggest markets in the world, then go check out Central de Abasto, which is Mexico City's main wholesale market. 
Here, you'll find producers, wholesalers, retailers, and consumers selling fruits, vegetables, meat, flowers, and more. We actually didn't have enough time to see all of them, but we did go and check out Condesa Tiangus Market, which is very cool. They specialize in fruits, really fresh, right? Very fresh. Yeah. They cut on the spot for you. Ooh, so good. But the only thing is that they only open on Tuesday. Yes, that's right. So tip there, don't go any other day than Tuesday. Um, lots of fruits. There's a food stall section at the back that you can try out. Really good tacos, of course. Oh, yeah, tacos. Yeah. If you're here, definitely check out one of the local markets for that feel. If you like walking around and exploring, then Mexico City has several nice neighborhoods for you to check out. Condesa is a bohemian hipster neighborhood that's very nice to walk around in. Then you also have Roman Norte, which is also artsy like Condesa, and has lots of quaint little boutiques and shops that you can literally spend a whole day there just exploring. Another neighborhood that's really cool is the Polenco uh, neighborhood. We kind of found that on the last day. There's some really charming streets. There's of course the main street, Mazark, which is all the big shopping uh, boutiques. but go behind them one street and you get this really cool shops. They're old houses that have been converted into restaurants and some shops. So really cool, really quaint. The street itself is Avenido Emilio Castella if you want to punch that into your Google map. If you want to learn more about the different neighborhoods, then check out this video, link at the top here, where we give you an intro to the history of Mexico City and the different neighborhoods. We hope you like this video and have a chance to check out some of the places we share with you. Yeah, and if you do, make sure you leave us a comment. Tell us what you thought about it. We'd love to hear about it. See you in the next adventure. <laughs>